You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. I am looking forward to bringing you a Friday review today that goes through one of my favorite new types of coffee. I love recommending this one specifically. Some of the dangers to watch out now that cannabis is becoming legal and CBD oil is becoming legal. Of course, you knew the pharmaceutical industries and different types of synthetic versions would be coming into the market. I want to warn you, watch out for those. And then let's talk about also, I want to do a quick review on the suntan lotion recipe I've been recommending that people have been loving. Just want to make sure you did see that last week or the last couple of weeks. And then some little bit of research on people who are doing wellness-based incentive programs at work and the actual results from those, which is fairly remarkable. So if you have one at work or you're trying to start one within your own work and you want to get it approved through HR, you need to check out this specific research as well. So let's get started with the Kamano Island Coffee Brewers. They are an absolutely fantastic organization. I'm one of those people who you know really likes coffee but tries not to drink it on a daily basis. And the reason is this, is that I no longer need it for energy. Believe me, there was a time in my life where I needed that cup of coffee just to like literally open up one eye in the morning. But now I don't and, and I don't get the same enjoyment because my body knows that it will make me a little bit too amped up if I'm drinking that first thing in the morning. So if I do have a cup of coffee, which I do love, I, I do really get into coffee. It's usually like late morning or maybe after lunch or the weekends. I might enjoy a cup of black coffee or maybe a, a black iced coffee or cold brew or something like that. And it's just because I enjoy it. Again, I'm not trying to get the energy from it. I believe that if you're trying to get the energy from coffee, there could be a problem. I mean, like there could be an HPA axis problem. There could be a thyroid based problem. Your body should not rely on coffee for energy. That's a broken rhythm, a broken hormonal rhythm or dysfunctional circadian rhythm as well, where your body's not waking up with energy. That needs to be fixed. That needs to be corrected. But that's not the topic of today's show. We've talked about those topics many, many times before and I've Total Wellness Tuesday, so check those out. But again, if you're someone that loves coffee and you do really like it to be a part of your routine, I totally understand that. I get most of the people I work with to wean off of coffee just down to one small cup per day with either an almond, coconut, hemp milk, whatever type of nut milk they want to put in, dairy-free milk in it, and we just get them down to one cup per day. And that and that's okay because, like again, you don't want to give up everything that you love in life, but also if you're someone that has heartburn, GERD, anxiety, any one of those things, then for a period of time, we do need to cut out all the caffeine and we can look at some of the Swiss water process-based decafs, those types of things. But today, what I want to share with you is that this this company, the Kamano Island Coffee Company, was one that I found out about. I was actually in a, I was in a conference. I, I remember specifically being at this conference. I had a bunch of meetings at it. And one of the, so they set up tables outside of conferences for the most part. And they're kind of sponsors of the event. They get people to know more about their company. And there's a bunch of great, literally really great, honest companies at this event. And one of the ones that was supplying coffee for the event was the Camino Island Coffee Roasters. And so I went up to them because I love talking with the vendors. I love, I just love the whole health and fitness industry in general. I will go to fitness-based expos and natural supplement-based expos, natural food-based expos all the time. You know, I'll go to the big one in Anaheim. I'll go to the one down in Baltimore on the East Coast. And I love talking with all these companies. I love sharing their material as well. And that's, you know, that's the thing is, Camino Coffee, they didn't say, oh, can you please promote us on your podcast? After I tasted their coffee and I actually learned more about their company, I couldn't help but not want to promote it because I love promoting best in class. And so right now, I just want to share with you, they're an organic 
coffee company. Of course, I'm going to promote organic, which means they're not using the heavy pesticide-based sprays on their crops. I also like that not only for human ingestion, but I like to make sure they're not just destroying the earth and they're not destroying our waters with all these pesticides that get then into the ground and get into our waterways as well. I like that it's a top, it's voted a top 1% coffee, that it's mostly single farm from around the world. It is uh, single farms from around the world. That's a better way of saying that. That is ethically grown, that it's literally the shade grown coffee that doesn't create soil erosion, then that's really, really important in my opinion, meaning like they're just not trying to maximize the land and just take everything from it, that they're actually trying to be aware of it and give back. I also like that they do third-party testing. They test their own beans for any type of contaminants. They test it for mold, and it's it's completely free, and they have those things that they can share with you as well, which I, I found, again, amazing. And the last part I like is I just want to make sure that just because it costs less money to, for labor in other countries, that we're not taking advantage of other people. I, I Just because we can get other people to work for less. I don't mean, I don't think that we should necessarily do that. Like, I don't think that that's always the fairest thing to do. I think people deserve to make a good wage. And so they do fair trade and wages and they get back 2% of their company's profits to nonprofit funding in Guatemala and a few other organizations. So really nice company. And the last thing I want to do is because, of course, we care about taste, right? So here's the thing. Let's see here. They have eight different brews to choose from. The first one is the Brazil, and that has caramel, hazel, and spice. Those are the tastes. The other one is Colombia that has cherry, red grape, and caramel. Ethiopia blend is blueberry, maple syrup, brown sugar, The Guatemala is nutmeg, grapefruit, and cacao hints. That's the one that I tasted, by the way, and it was excellent. The nutmeg, grapefruit, cacao one has a little bit of that chocolatey taste to it. The Honduras is molasses, brown sugar, and cinnamon. The Papua New Guinea is chocolate, dried fruit, and brown sugar. The Peruvian blend is almond, honey, and cacao. And the Sumatra is smoky, dried fruit, and caramel. So that one I would stay away from because anything smoky is going to start to drive my histamines uh, crazy. So here are the ones that I ordered because, uh, again, we have people over on the weekends and I love making I, mean, I love making coffee for people because most people do enjoy uh, a cup of coffee. And it's always with a meal too. It's better not to have it on an empty stomach, which can really exacerbate that central nervous system. Not a big fan of that, but we'll talk about that another day. So here are the ones that I purchased so that I can kind of sample out with people is um, the Brazil, the caramel, hazelnut, and spice. These are all flavors that I love. So of course, I wanted to try them as well. The Colombia, which is cherry, red grape, and caramel. Love anything caramel-based flavored. So you can see those first two. The Ethiopia, these are some of my favorite combinations. Blueberry, maple syrup, and brown sugar. That to me sounds fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to trying that. And the Peruvian one, the almond, honey, and cacao. I purchased those four. I will let you know how those go in the future. But of course, I'll link up to this in the show notes. So just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 546. That's where all the show notes and the links and the different flavors that I will be purchasing will be right up there as well. Try out your own and then let me know on Instagram or let me know how you like them just by going to stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral as well. All right. The next thing I had to share with you is this thing called synthetic cannabis or synthetic weed or synthetic marijuana, whatever you want to call it. Here's the issue. You knew this was going to happen. Whenever you allow it to become legalized and whenever you get pharmaceutical agencies involved with this, is they're finding a way to create a synthetic cannabis that they can patent, that they can put out there, that they can make even cheaper than just growing a plant because that's not okay. We can't take this thing like a plant and make it legal. We need to somehow make it cheaper. We need to make more profit on it and we need to patent it so that nobody else can do it. This is the mindset of these big corporations and big pharma. And it's it's honestly, it's despicable because marijuana, you can smoke. Again, I'm not promoting the smoking of marijuana. I'm not, I'm not promoting that at all. But what I'm saying is you can smoke as much as you want and you won't die. There are no deaths on record at all from smoking marijuana, okay? Unless it's laced with something. You're not going to, yes, smoke yourself to death. Think of it that way. You could certainly drink yourself to death with alcohol. You could take prescription pills. You could even take drink down a bottle of NyQuil and you could die. But you cannot by smoking a plant, by smoking, well, this plant, cannabis, I should say. So that's really important to think about because now... And again, the government will try to scare you there. And again, I'm not a promoter of marijuana. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not promoting it whatsoever. I don't think anybody needs to smoke marijuana. I do not. Here's the deal. 
Now people are dying from smoking marijuana, but they'll lead you to believe it's marijuana. It's not. It's synthetic marijuana. And it's actually not even marijuana. It can, you can't call it that because it's not. It's synthetic cannabinoids, but they're just saying it's synthetic weed or synthetic marijuana or whatever you want to call it. And so here's the deal. Marijuana works or THC in marijuana works. And again, please listen to my previous podcast on CBD oil because I spoke about this and I spoke about how it's very different than even marijuana as well because it doesn't have any uh, psychoactive components. But THC in marijuana gives you the psychoactive effect, right? So it gives you that by binding to specific receptors like the CB1 and CB2 two receptors in the brain. Now, CBD oil can actually block that. So it it reduces the anxiety as well. Well, here's the deal. These synthetic marijuanas, they actually bind to those same ones, but they're two to 100 times stronger. Think about that. They can induce all sorts of side effects, literally all sorts of different side effects, which is like vomiting, fever. I had a whole list. I can't find them right now of what they were specifically accelerated heart rates, blackouts, headaches, kidney damage, agitation, high blood pressure, and psychosis. All of that can happen with the synthetic THC that will not happen with regular marijuana. Now with marijuana, you could get the paranoia, you could get the anxiety. There's no doubt about that, but it will not kill you. So in the 1980s, they started creating these synthetic cannabinoids, and they're actually made from alcohol and acetone solvents. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, I've heard of acetone solvents before. Yes, it's paint thinner or nail polish remover. That's one of the main things, and it is acetone. So if you can think about it, pharmaceutical agents said, hey, why don't we get some paint thinner and have people essentially smoke it? And I mean, when you think about that, think of how insane it is. Yes, you will literally get a high, but of course you're going to get the headaches, the side effects, the vomiting, and it could kill you. It makes no sense. So it's why we really have to be careful. We really do. Because people are getting now bags of marijuana with, if they're synthetic, there can be what's called a hot spot. And that is a an poorly mixed solution of the synthetic cannabinoids. So it'll be too potent in one specific batch. And when that happens, now you get the hundred times the effect. And of course, you can't get that through nature, but you can get it in a lab. That is why I'm telling you, you can't buy your supplements from someone you don't trust, someone that you don't know. You can't buy marijuana from someplace that you don't tr- you trust or know. And that's why, actually, I believe that it's good that it's going to be legal. And that's because you'll be able to go to one of these, I don't know what they're called, but cannabis-based stores, and you'll be able to go in there, and you'll be able to see the actual cannabis, and you'll be able to pick the potency, to pick the type that you want, lower in THC, higher in THC, higher in CBD, whatever you'd like, and it's going to be a lot safer way of doing it. It really is. Now, keep in mind, too, if they're doing this with the synthetic marijuana, they're going to be doing it with CBD oil. And you have to be really careful because people are getting tremendous benefits from CBD oil. Tremendous. Literally, without a doubt, people are purchasing second, third, fourth time already from us for the CBD oil. And that's because they know the difference. They've tried it before. We have the highest potency, but also cleanest organic CO2 processed. That means, again, if it's going in my body, you better believe, you better believe that I did the research. And this comes from five farms in Colorado, all organic, no sprays, nothing like that, tested, pure, clean. And it's also a higher dose. It's at 24.2 milligrams. There's a lot of companies out there you'll see. Look at the back, five milligrams, 10 milligrams at most. You do the math, it costs you, might be the same price, but it costs you like three times as much. There's a huge difference. I'm telling you, find always wherever you are in the world, wherever you're listening to this, find a trusted source and make sure that you are not getting a synthetic version. If you are, you are literally putting your life in your hands. And that's why I want this to be a public service announcement. And I want you to make sure that you share it with your friends and family and coworkers that they're not buying cannabis now, marijuana, they're not buying CBD oil, that they're not buying anything. They don't know the source. Really, really important guys. Real important. All right. Up next, we'll get a little lighter right now, and we're going to talk about the new, I shouldn't say it's new because I've been using it for a while, but I just posted it, and it's a natural sunscreen recipe. So again, if if you checked out, let's see what show it was on. It was just a few podcasts previous to this on episode... 
5.11, where I shared with you basically the top sunscreens. And those were Badger and Loving Naturals. Check back out if you want to go to that. StephenBrell.com forward slash 5.11. That told you about how to know what the safe sun time is for you because it's different for every person, where they should be using vitamin D3. And I also reviewed a book on that one called Wheat Belly. So definitely check that out. But then over the weekend, the Cabral concept, and I know like I'm telling you, you got to check out those shows because there's so much that's applicable to you, even though they're not your specific questions maybe. But I, I gave that recipe and I just want to make sure that everyone got that because um, it's really, it's one that we like, that we think works tremendously well. And it's an FPS PF of about 30 to 35 if you're looking for what's the rating for it. And it lasts for about two to three hours, which is really impressive. Okay. So in episode 540, so steamcabell.com forward slash 540, I gave this natural sunscreen recipe that you are welcome to copy and try out for yourself. It's actually pretty easy to make. If I can make it, you could definitely make it. So here it is. It's a half a cup of olive oil. Okay. One fourth of a cup of coconut oil or cacao butter or both if you'd like. It's cocoa butter. is just a, a nice smell to it. Like it has a really good scent if you like the smell of cocoa butter, little chocolatey undertones in there. Then after the half a cup of olive oil and one fourth a cup of coconut oil, it's two tablespoons of shea butter. And shea butter, just like coconut oil, has an SPF. It has a very low SPF, about four to five. So you can actually just rub shea butter on your body or coconut oil if you were just looking for an SPF of around four or five. Now, keep in mind, coconut oil is very greasy, though, and that's why we wouldn't want to use that alone. The olive oil, we use that in the beginning because it it has a nice blend. Like, it's a good blender. So it's a really good one, and it's so great for your skin as well. Nice monounsaturated fats. My great-great-aunt, who I knew very well growing up, she wasn't that, like, age-wise above my grandmother, is um, she used to put olive oil on her skin every single day. She had amazing skin. She's from Italy. She did that every single day. Okay, but I digress. So we'll get back on track. Now it's a fourth of a cup of beeswax. We need this beeswax because that's our thickener. So that's a big part of why we're using this as well. It's going to make it a little bit thick. That's one fourth of a cup. And then some optional ones, but I do recommend, is the red raspberry seed oil. So red raspberry seed oil, if you didn't, if you don't check this out, go to Instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. On Instagram, I share one daily tip that you can't get anywhere else. So on there, I also gave uh, this big thing of different SPFs of oils. And one of them was raspberry seed oil. Now, believe it or not, raspberry seed oil has between a 28 and 50 SPF. That's huge. And the reason there's also those huge you know, parameter between 28 and 50 is because of the concentration. So it really depends on the concentration of the red raspberry seed extract oil that you're getting. And the carrot seed oil is the next one. That's optional, but I think it's great to put in because carrot seed oil also is very high in vitamin A. So it's repairing your skin at the same time that you're getting maybe a little bit of sun damage as well. Carrot seed oil is a 38 to 40. So if I add up all my SPFs, I'm going to get realistically on a conservative side about a 30 to 35. I look for a 30 to 35, somewhere around a 35 for SPF. So I tell people essentially when they've been in the sun for a little while, they've gotten that little pink touch, just a touch of pink hue to their skin. Right away, it's time to apply that sunscreen, natural sunscreen, of course, because we know regular sunscreens, if you listen to my previous show, have cancer causing agents in them, which means, yes, you're trying to prevent skin cancer, but at the same time, you could be giving yourself cancer by literally slathering on known chemicals that do cause cancer. And it's despicable. But again, as we spoke about earlier, this is what labs do. This They don't care about the end product. They don't care about what happens to the body. They care about producing things cheaply and bringing them to market. So that is the, oh, sorry, one more. Obviously, the really important thing is adding zinc oxide. Now, zinc oxide comes in a powder. So you want to make sure when you're making this, you put a little bit of mask on, you cover your mouth. You just don't want to inhale zinc oxide powder. So you could do this outside, however you want to make it. But What you do is you put all of your oils, your olive oil, your coconut oil, your shea butter, your beeswax, your res raspberry, and your carrot seed oil. And it's just one teaspoon of the oils, the red raspberry and the uh, carrot seed. And you mix them all together in like a mason jar. This is how I do it. And you put them, you put that mason, first you get a saucepan that you might cook pasta and or rice or something like that. And you're going to fill it a couple inches with water and you're going to turn that on warm. So turn about halfway for the heat on your stove. Once that water gets warm, you're going to put in your mason jar, which is going to have all of your oils and liquids in it. After about a minute or two, they'll all kind of blend together. At that point, you can stir it up 
You can shake it up and you just make it to one blended consistency. After that, you'll take it off the heat and you'll mix in your zinc oxide powder, blend it in, and then just put it in one of those travel squeeze containers that you can purchase literally at any drugstore or any place that you want. And you can even make a bunch of them. Now, you have your own natural, perfectly clean, perfectly organic sunscreen. It works fantastic. So definitely enjoy that. Feel free to pass it along. All right. I know my time is up. I try to be consistent and I also try to make sure that I respect your time as well. So I want to end though with this research on wellness incentive plans at work. There's a lot of people that I'm meeting with and working with right now. They're telling me, okay, my work is doing this for wellness. Here's what they're trying to get out of it. If you're an employer, if you're a small business, big business, whatever it might be, think about this right now. Here's medical costs. So medical claim costs, meaning like if you're an employer or if you're an employee, the amount of of money that you request from your insurance, I mean, like the times that you have to use that health insurance card has declined by $1,421 per participant. And that means $1,421 less. That's the medical claims that are less compared from previous year of not implementing a wellness-based plan. The controlled group showed no improvement. This is a pretty impressive study and I'll link it up in the show notes today as well. So for every dollar that was invested, it yielded about $6 in healthcare saving costs. Because I know as an employer, you say, well, you know, I want to do all these things for my employees, but it costs so much money. Think of it this way. On the back end, you could be saving $6 for every $1 that you put in. And lost work days went down by an average of 80%. And within five to six years, your health cost premiums for insurance went down by 50%. So that's pretty remarkable. It cut in half. I mean, think about that. So again, if you're an employee or even employee, you want to bring this to your work because you say to them, well, we, I'd love to be doing some type of incentive-based plan. I'd love to be kind of joining up as a community with all my fellow coworkers and try to go for more walks during lunch, try to eat healthier, try to exercise, do all of these things. You know, bring this information. Information is power. Share that with others. I'm telling you, if we get enough employers to be doing this, everyone starts to get healthy. Everyone starts to focus on their own health, which is really what it's all about because we can't ask other people to take care of us. We need to start to take control of our own health. When we do that, everything in life gets better. There's no doubt about it. Thank you everyone for tuning into another Friday review. Appreciate each and every one of your listens. And if I can ask you one thing before the weekend starts, if you wouldn't mind going to iTunes. And if you could please leave a rating and review, if you could leave a rating and review, it really helped me out so much because what we're trying to do is spread this message with as many people as we can. And the more ratings we get, the more reviews we get, the higher we climb the charts on our iTunes account. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Be sure to check back tomorrow for our house calls. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.